Hi there, I'm Eric LeClaire from Amp Global. I'm gonna walk you through this installation process. So grab your tools and let's get started. Today we're going to be installing the Clearview HD DVR mirror kit for Ford Bronco. Designed for 2021 to 2023 Ford Bronco, this full display rear view mirror replacement kit and DVR combo gives you a clear unobstructed view of what's going on behind your truck. The rear camera comes with a universal bracket attached. We're going to remove the universal bracket and install the new camera bracket included with the Bronco specific hardware. Using a number one Phillips screwdriver, remove the two screws securing the universal bracket to the back of the camera. Attach the new camera bracket using the screws which were just removed. Now we're going to attach the camera and the assembly to the mounting bracket. Using two M3 by 0.5 screws and lock washers, attach the camera to the camera mounting plate. For most applications with stock standard wheels, attach the camera bracket assembly to the wheel bracket using an M6 by one screw and lock washer. For larger wheels, attach the riser plate to the wheel bracket, then attach the camera assembly to the riser plate using one of the M6 by one screws and lock washers. When using the riser plate, the camera height and angle and rotation can be adjusted to match the wheel. Final adjustments will be made later and these bolts can be tightened at that time. Remove the spare tire off the tire carrier using a 19 millimeter socket or the factory tire iron. Once the tire has been removed, loosen the bolts on the spare tire carrier. We're going to completely remove the upper two left bolts. This will allow us to follow the factory wiring. Tech tip, you can place the spare tire on the ground face down, then place the camera bracket assembly on the back of the tire, aligning the camera through one of the usable holes, closest to the center as possible. Place the spare tire mounting bracket and camera assembly onto the wheel studs and secure them with the three included push nut retainers. The push nut retainers can be installed using an 11 16 or 17 millimeter deep socket and a hammer if needed. Route the camera cable through the opening in the top of the tire carrier and through the opening on the left side. For additional security, you can zip tie the camera cable to the factory wiring. Cut or release the zip tie on the rubber grommet outside of the swing gate. Carefully remove the tape on the grommet. Using a nylon pry tool, remove the plastic trim panel on the inside of the swing gate by prying up on the bottom edge and working your way from one edge to the other. Remove the vent panel by inserting your pry tool under the left side. Release the clips along the left edge and remove the panel. Push in on the four plastic tabs securing the grommet into the swing gate. This allows you to push the grommet to the outside of the swing gate. Unwrap the factory tape. Tape the camera to a zip tie and pass the camera through the grommet. Note, this is much easier if you spray a little bit of soapy water on the taped camera cable and zip tie, it helps it slide through the grommet. If passing through the grommet proves to be too difficult, you can cut a small hole in the bottom of the grommet and pass the camera cable through there instead. Pull the leftover slack through and retape the front and back of the factory grommet. For a more factory appearance, you can wrap the wires together in cloth tape. Zip tie the harness back to the grommet. Push the grommet back into the swing gate and make sure it's properly seated. Reach into the vent hole and pass the camera cable through the opening following the factory wiring. Place the provided heat shrink onto the camera cable. Align the two arrows on the cables, then push the cables together until they click into place. Align the heat shrink over both connectors and heat with a heat gun. Secure the camera cable to the factory wiring using zip ties. Using a nylon pry tool, remove the four plastic covers hiding the floor bolts. Use a 10 millimeter socket to remove these eight bolts, then set them aside.
pull straight up on this large plastic floor trim panel to remove it. Using your pry tool, pop up the small trim panel behind the roll bar. Remove the small plastic cover attached to the large plastic panel by prying it away from the side of the vehicle. Remove the passenger rear door sill panel by prying up. Next, remove this large plastic trim panel. Start by pulling forward where the small plastic cover was removed earlier. There are many fasteners holding this panel to the side of the truck. By the seat belt, pull back on the weather stripping to see a small clip. Slide the clip out of the metal frame to release it. This will allow you to release the panel here. If your Bronco is equipped with the B&O sound system, this panel will look a little different as it has a grill covering the factory subwoofer. Be sure to disconnect the light and power port harness on the back of the panel. Remove the cloth tape from both ends of the factory wiring loom. Pass the camera cable through the wiring loom and then retape both ends. We're leaving the camera connection inside the swing gate area, not in the loom, for accessibility in the future if needed. Locate the factory black 20 pin connector. Find the green wire with the brown stripe in pin number two in the connector. Using a multimeter, confirm the reverse wire shows 12 volts when in reverse. Do not start the vehicle. Engage the parking brake. The wire can be tested with just the ignition on. Once verified, attach the red reverse trigger wire on the camera's extension cable to the reverse wire of the vehicle. Secure this connection by soldering the wires. Then insulate this connection with electrical tape, then zip tie to completely secure the connection. Reinstall the upper trim panel. Route the camera cable along the factory wiring, securing with zip ties along the way. Remove the front passenger door sill panel and remove the rear sill panel. Pull up on the trim panel by the seat belt. This allows you to pass the wire under the edge of this panel without removing it. You can also use a long zip tie to pass the wire behind this panel. Remove the four T30 Torx bits from the passenger side grab handle. Pry up on the bottom edge of the trim panel above the passenger side kick panel. Then pry toward the rear of the vehicle to remove it. Pry the kick panel back to remove it. Remove the 13 mm bolt above the kick panel. Place the ground wire terminal behind the 13 mm bolt then reinstall the bolt. Cut or unlatch the OEM zip ties around the main wiring harness. Locate the large blue wire. This is where we will connect our constant power yellow wire. Note, on vehicles with the B&O sound system, there are two large blue wires. Do not probe or cut the largest blue wire. Strip the jacket off the end of the yellow wire. Carefully remove some of the jacket from the blue wire. Wrap the yellow wire around the blue wire. Use wire strippers to remove some of the jacket on the white wire with orange stripe. Remove some of the jacket on the red wire. Then wrap it around the white wire with orange stripe. Solder these wire connections while protecting the other wires. Insulate these connections with electrical tape and secure with zip ties. Resecure the wiring harness using zip ties or install new ones. Remove the plastic airbag trim panel on the A pillar. Open the passenger sun visor. Remove the plastic cover hiding the mounting screw. Remove the seven millimeter bolt securing the sun visor. Swing the visor back toward the windshield, then roll the bottom toward you to remove it. Using a small flathead screwdriver, pry open the small door. Now remove the T20 Torx screw. Release the plastic trim panel behind the rearview mirror against the windshield. Fold the mirror up. Remove the T20 Torx screw. 
Slide the mirror up to remove it from the mount. Remove the plastic cover behind the mirror. Slide the new mirror monitor onto the factory mount. Then tighten the Phillips screw. Removing the small T20 Torx on the airbag cover makes routing the camera cable easier. Route the cable up the kick panel area. Pass it behind the plastic cover on the A-pillar toward the top. Then route it toward the rear view mirror monitor. Align the arrows on the cables and connect them until they click into place. Tuck the excess cabling above the upper trim panel at the top of the windshield. Carefully pry up on the speaker grill, starting at the front edge. Work your way around until all clips are released. Using a 7mm socket, remove the two screws securing the speaker into the dash. Disconnect the speaker harness and set the speaker aside for now. Tape the end of the GPS antenna cable to a long zip tie and pass it through the speaker hole down through the dash. Remove the tape on the bottom of the GPS antenna. Place the GPS antenna on the small metal flange under the dash. Plug the GPS antenna cable into the 3.5mm jack on the mirror harness. Align the arrows on the camera extension cable and connect them until they click into place. Secure any excess wiring to the factory wiring location using zip ties. Once the wiring is completely connected, turn the Bronco on to verify operation. The mirror monitor should show an unobstructed image of what's behind the vehicle. Then when the vehicle is shifted into reverse, the camera should automatically shift down to the second viewing angle for reversing. Reinstall the speaker and grill. Reinstall any interior panels in the reverse order of which they were removed. Make final adjustments to the position of the camera bracket. Be sure to tighten the bolts once you've confirmed proper fit. Then reinstall the spare tire. This completes the installation of our Clearview HD DVR mirror kit for Ford Bronco from Echo Master. We hope you've enjoyed this install video. Thanks for watching.